Code of Prayer, Chief Z, fellow Chiefs, First Sergeants, Supervisors, Family Members, thanks for coming out today. You know, I was just mentioned a minute ago about uh, um, how personal this is, and it is. It's good that you have the support. It's good that you are out here, and that you're actually uh, supporting these airmen as they transition from airmen to, uh, to NCO status. So um, I, too, would like to also thank God. I think that's a piece of my life as well. I'd like to thank my uh, lovely wife, Jessa, and she was. She was, at, she was at every PT session. And uh, forced me to go as well. Uh, <laughs> but no, it was a good time. It was, it was a good bonding experience, and uh, uh, I just had an absolute great time. It's humbling to see everybody run around doing burpees, and I'm doing a modified version, but uh, I got through it, and it was a good time. It really was. Um, I also like to like, thank the, uh, the ALS uh, staff and uh, the students for the support uh, during this. It was just a great time. It really was. I enjoyed it. It was humbled and everything. Um, so I went through ALS. Uh, in 1996, May of 1996, when I went through, uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I got I to share this story just to start this whole speech off. And so when I went through, uh, I got accused of cheating. I was like, Whoa, integrity first! I said, "It's crazy." The instructor called me and my friend Aaron Smith called him up to call us up to the front of his, you know, the office and said, "Hey." Little test compromise. We're not sure if you guys have been cheating, but uh, some of the answers were fairly similar. I said, "Ah, oh, there's no way." So I right, well, you're gonna have to prove it to me because I'm not just gonna leave. I'm not gonna academic suspension. You're gonna have to prove it to me. I said, "All right, well, I'll tell you what." On question two, Aaron Smith wrote, "I don't know," and then we see that you wrote, "I don't know either." <laughs> so, anyways, quickly dismissed, right? <laughs> I didn't change. I graduated. Uh, so we had a, a tribunal um, sit down. We had a commander, myself, and a first sergeant. And through a series of questions, uh, they asked us uh, what, it, what it took to be a leader. And I always love it when I hear this question. What does it take to be a leader? Uh, really, it, it's simple. It's real simple. Will people follow me? That's it. We put some fancy term on it and everything, but it's not. It's just, will people follow you? So the challenge is, well, how, how do you get people to follow you? Seems simple, right? There's all these books out there, all this literature, and you should be able to, there should be a how-to guide, people want to follow you. Uh, but at the end of the day, really what it is, is connectability. And that's what I really, uh, I spoke with the class about quite a bit, the connectability. Now you're gonna hear touch phrase words like, touch points and uh, intrusive leadership and and uh, you're going to hear all these terms but really it's just connectability here i am 48 year old man going to connect with some of these students i've been in the service longer than everybody alive so the challenge is how do i get up and talk in front of people that are half my age and just talk to them and you know it was just touched on a minute ago but never tell that. Here's how you do it. You don't talk about work all the time. You get out there and you connect with them. You find that one quirky thing, that one conversation, you be vulnerable, be human, be personal. That's why I said that to the students, be personal. It is personal. I, I, I do, I loathe it when someone's like, well, not personal. It is personal. That's someone's kid. That's someone, their parents likely, have a picture of them on sitting on the mantle, sitting on the refrigerator in basic training. My mom's got a picture of me, a lot more hair, skinnier. <laughs> I'm there. I'm like, who is that guy? I don't know. He's like, Looks like me. That airman that you're going to connect to is someone's kid, and that's why I encourage people. Don't, don't ever forget that. It's important. It's important that you understand that. But. The connectability is only part of it, right? Because we have accountability piece in the Air Force, right? So I'll tell you this. Um, it's ALS, right? Airman Leadership School, not Airman Management School. So that, that was a key word. So when I came up through, uh, I got to talk about Tech Sergeant. It's the first time I had to actually lead a pretty good sized crew, base crew. And um, I was charged with hiring people on. And I really did. And I know a lot of the chiefs will stand in front of you here and they'll give a speech and there's an acronym, but I, I literally have had this speech for years. And, and uh, this acronym rather, 
and, and it's plain. I don't even need to look at this script right here. It's people, loyalty, attitude, yielding, mission, and entitlement. And it goes down kind of like this. People. That's a person you talk to. Say please, say thank you. See what they got going on in life. That's a person. Uh, manners go a long way. Smile. I was laughing you go around base and people are, don't have a smile on their face. I smile every time I wake up. Okay. It's just a, just a blessing, it really is. And I drive a Toyota Yaris, so I mean, you're not gonna <laughs> not be happy. Right? Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, the L is for loyalty. You know what loyalty is to me? Loyalty gets you coming early, gets you to stay late, leads you to take care of your boss, make sure they're set up for success, make sure it's not about you, make sure it's the like organization as a whole. Make sure that they know that you're loyal to that organization, and if your leg falls off, you're coming in, you're taking it up, and you're coming into work. Loyalty is really important to me, and it should be important to you, uh, class graduates, fellow leaders. Attitude. I mentioned the smile on my face. Attitude, positive attitude, it's raining out. Uh, I've worked with some people before that were just, uh, you know, almost too positive. Uh, and you want to be positive, but uh, you want to make sure it's realistic too. But take action. It's not just attitude. It's attitude with action. Don't just say you're going to do it. Do it. And then get it done. Yielding. So I actually love the Marine Corps. I love the Marine Corps. I was stationed in Okinawa for 13 years. That's a long time, and I loved it. Um, and I dealt a lot with the Marine Corps. And the reason I love the Marine Corps is I have a term for this. They will shovel snow with a pitchfork. It doesn't make sense. It'll take them three times as long, and they don't even know what the word no is. And they get it done. I went to a base support plan one time. There was all these members sitting around, and they're talking, and they said, hey, uh, I don't know if we can do this. We're gonna have to set up this perimeter, this entry control point. We're not certain we can actually make this happen. I went around the room, and there's all these excuses of what, how we couldn't do it. We got to this old master guns, and this guy was, He'd been in since Christ was a corporal. <laughs> he was he was old and crusty. And he said, uh, we don't have a manning problem. We have a leadership problem. I got 5,000 Marines in this thing. In barracks. We'll get this done tomorrow. And I love that tenacious attitude. Shoveling snow with a pitchfork. It's just amazing. They don't even know what roadblocks are. And they don't know how to yield. So that can be learned from a lot of leaders out here as well. Uh, the mission. Mission's always in there, right? Why, why did we get up? Why did we put the uniform on? Mission, you know, mission, it, mission, it's gotta, so if you ever get in a dif difficult situation as a future leader, some of your NCOs get ready to sell on, I'll tell you this right now, here's what you need to remember. How does this affect the mission? How does what I'm gonna do, what call I'm gonna make, what judgment I'm gonna use, how is this gonna affect the mission? It always needs to be in the play, okay? And then lastly is, is the E for entitlement. So I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan. I heard he's coming here soon, but, but I'll tell you, yeah, he does he has several books, and one of them out there is Leaders Called, is called Leaders Eat Last. I love this book, I've read it a couple times. And some of you may have heard this story, but I'll give my variant of this story. He talks about there was this, under, this retired under Secretary of State. And this retired under Secretary of State was standing in front of a crowd, much as I am right now. And he looked down, and he saw a styrofoam cup filled with coffee. And he looked at that coffee and he said, you know, um, a year ago, I was the acting under Secretary of State. And because of that, I was entitled to a lot of things. Someone booked my first class business ticket. I, uh, I was picked up at the airport. I was dropped off at a nice hotel. Next morning, someone picked me up at a buffet for a breakfast. I was quickly whisked to the university, brought backstage, handed this beautiful ceramic cup. And uh, in reverse order, left, and it was just a phenomenal trip. But as I stand in front of you today, I have a styrofoam cup because I had to order my own tickets today. I had to get my own hotel. They lost my luggage. I went downstairs. I had to get a bagel for breakfast. Found my way to this university. Remember that you go around backstage, talk to one of the people backstage, and they said, oh, there's coffee over here and a styrofoam cup, and I poured myself a cup. And here I stand in front of you. And the gentleman said, it was at that time I realized it was never about me as a person. 
I don't deserve a ceramic cup. I deserve a styrofoam uh, cup. It's not about you, right? It's about the position you hold. It's not a parking spot because I'm a chief. It's about the position you hold. So many can learn from that. So hopefully uh, take that further advice. So uh, there's my acronym I use for hiring people. Um, welcome them to my team, making them feel welcome. And I'll tell you, uh, it's, it's really served me well you know, with the loyalty piece with my NCOs. I make a point every day as I come in. And by the way, I need to kind of stop here real quick. I was told by my boss this could only be three minutes, so let me know if I go to three minutes. All, all right. Am I there? Okay, I'm, I'm really close. Said, reel me in if I get out of control, okay? Chief Foster. Um, <clears throat> so I'll tell you, uh, one of the things I always tell a lot of people, I told the class here today, uh, I told them uh, earlier today, the keys to success is real simple also. What I've always used, I've adhered to. Keys to success, know your audience, know your boss, know yourself. Know your audience, who's listening? You hear the fishbowl thing, everybody's watching, they are. You're a leader. Get your hands out of your pocket, get your um, sunglasses off your head. People are watching, you're a leader. They're expecting a lot from you. You wear that, you wear that extra stripe, they're gonna know it, okay? So know your audience, who's listening? Uh, know your boss. You don't always have to agree with your boss. I'll tell you what, you want some staples on the left-hand side, purple staple every other Thursday? If it's not safety, security, ethical, moral, or illegal, do it. You're not being a yes man, just do it. So know your boss, because it's important. And get on the same page. And then know yourself. If you know you shouldn't be on stage speaking in front of a lot of people, <laughs> then don't do it. But with that, get out of your comfort zone. And that's what I do. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, stand in front of talk to people. And I joke, I, talk to, I would talk to a tree stump if it was tasty. <laughs> now, so know your audience, know your boss, know yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, with all these words of wisdom, all these acronyms I'm gonna throw out to you, here's what I'll tell you. Just like I told every one of the graduates as I handed them this to you. It only has meaning if you assign value to it. That extra ribbon you have on you now today for the NCO graduation, that does not define you, or rank does not define you. It only has meaning if you assign value to it. And you should value it. So with that class, I'd like to kind of close, and I just want to say this. Stay humble, stay hungry, lead well, and Godspeed. Thank you. Hello.